solar over the last few years has changed drastically, especially in the last five or so. We've gone from throwaway solar panel recovery to being able to actually buy 200 watt systems at a semi reasonable price to diesel heaters to all kinds of stuff now. And I'd like to show you some of that, but I'd like to say a thank you to Redodo. This system started off as a lawn tractor battery when I was first beta testing it about three and a half years ago. It then very quickly got upgraded to a battery that came out of my old Ford Ranger when I upgraded. The 35 watt solar panel was good, but we progressed into 160 watts. And then we ended up getting one of the original Redodos when they first really came onto the market. It's actually behind me up in here, kind of hard to see. And we killed controllers after that. I think we killed two controllers, actually. And so then Renergy ended up coming out with a lithium-compatible charger um, controller but it was independent from any system. So you still had to piecemeal a bunch of stuff together. And so that's the reason why we have this eco-worthy system. And I will make sure to post links for everything down below. This is eco-worthy's new 200 watt LED LiPo 4 AGM um, and lithium compatible 200 watt system with controller. So everything that I had to piecemeal together three years ago is now one package that is compatible with the Redodo batteries. Also, these are really cool because with the charge controller and everything, no matter what I do, these lower level charge controllers usually do not have Bluetooth. And so if I want to check everything, I have to come out to the garage. And if it's a snowstorm out and it's all these things, I really don't want to have to do that. Or if I'm in my PJs at night and I'm curious, this has Bluetooth built into the battery itself that I can be able to scan with my phone and find out what's going on from inside my house. I never actually have to come out to the, to the controller in order to check it. And I think that is great. I can't wait to be able to check that information. Here in Maine, this is a lifesaver legitimately. It is not uncommon whatsoever for us to go anywhere from three days to a week without power during really drastic storms. So when I have a baby in the house and I have to be able to keep milk on hand that is safe for the baby to drink, I have to be able to heat an area of the house in order to have the baby safe and all of that stuff. Because of Redodo, Renergy, EcoWorthy, and all the others that I've worked with over the years, I now have that capability in my home. And that gives my better half peace of mind and it gives me peace of mind. So back when I got this battery, I was that dumb customer. And I sent Rebo a message saying, where the hell are these? I didn't find them in the package. And they sent me a very nice, polite customer service email that it was in the foam packaging so that it wouldn't scratch up and mess up the battery. That was cool. But what I just found is post bolts here. <laughs> I can't have been the only one who sent them an email. So anyways, the next thing is I scanned the QR code. I installed the app. That went perfectly fine. And then... They told me to scan the QR code in order to load the battery. And I was like, okay. And it said, wrong QR code. And I went, oh. Oh yeah, stupid. Bluetooth. So I scanned that one. And then it said, error, cannot connect to Bluetooth device. So I made sure my phone had Bluetooth on. And I was like, I don't know what to say here. So I threw a voltmeter on. 
And this thing only came with 3.2, 3. Point whatever volts in it. I'm betting that the app will not connect until this thing is back up to power, which I didn't plan on. And yeah. So it's a good thing that Again, in this whole sorting out lithium thing, I ordered up a Golo 100 amp charger because it's one of the few chargers that was made for race cars that is lithium compatible. So I'm going to be throwing this on the Golo in order to be able to run the heater tonight. Otherwise, my better half is going to have my hide. Imagine my surprise that in Maine I couldn't manage to find metric ends for the wires. So these are quarter inch and a step bit, and we've got them so that they now fit. Not the right way to do it, but it's gonna get us up and running. Don't mind the rather warped Golo. That's what happens in summer when you leave it on your dashboard in your truck. My bad. But I wanted to pass this on because I've had this problem happen in the past, and it happened with these. There is something about the design of these that when they get below a certain voltage, the only way that you can charge them is to have them totally disconnected from everything. I could not have the diesel heater connected. I could not have this connected. It had to be totally disconnected from everything to charge it. I don't know why they do that. My theory has always been that the BMS that's inside these things goes postal, and that's the reason, but it is what it is. When I was running lead-acid batteries, that was never a problem. It was only when I switched to these LiPo4s. And one hour later, we've come in, we've hooked up our negative side on here, we're still trickle charging it just to make sure. We can see we're matching at 13.4 here. We've got our charge circuit coming in. We've got our diesel heater out. We've got our negative that is coming down to the battery here. As you can see, this is not connected yet, but we should be perfectly fine to hook this up now. If I touch it right there, as you can see, nothing died. So we can connect that up and should be all set to go and leave it on that overnight. All right, let's see what we can do here. Add via Bluetooth. Oh, cool, found both of them. Connect. Now, right now I've got it on the charger, so I wonder if it'll see it. So if I click it, oh, there we go. Charging at current rate, 11, Hours, 12 minutes, cool. That sounds about right to me. There we go, the sun is rising outside and we can see through the Bluetooth app that we have charge coming into both of these. They are both balanced, all set and happy. We've got a cord here, just haphazardly hooked up to our diesel heater, which yes, is leaking. Welcome to owning a diesel heater. I don't care whether it's a Hackery, a Vevor, whether it's whatever, any of them. The first two things that you should buy along with your diesel heater is a spare pump and spare lines for the diesel heater. They all crack out after about a year and a half. This one is two years old and it just blew a line. The other thing is buy yourself a gasket kit and make sure you get the gasket kit that actually has the... Um, what do they call it? Glow plug along with the screen that goes with the go glow plug. Anyways, I need my coffee. It's early morning. I'm going to shut this down so I can fix it, but I wanted to end this video with showing a screenshot right now that's going on with the batteries that I just recorded because the sun is coming up and you can literally see it going back and forth trying to calculate how long the batteries are going to run this diesel heater. Once the sun is fully risen, rose, whatever you want to say, it'll be at the point that we'll produce enough amperage coming in at, and wattage that we'll be able to run both diesel heaters and still charge the batteries on a sunny day. That is a total game changer in the system. Anyways, 
thank you very much, and I hope this was helpful for you and gets you up and running on your micro solar system.